Today, I'll be showing you guys how to make a Roblox GFX using Roblox Studio and Blender. So yeah, let's get it. To start off, head over to this website in the description. This is where you're going to download the rigs. Once you're here, click on this rig pack. Then you're going to add it to cart and you're going to purchase it. Don't worry, it's absolutely free. It's zero dollars, but you can give them money if you'd like. But after you've downloaded it, then we're going to move into Roblox Studio. Now in Roblox Studio, we're going to import the character we're going to use for the GFX. So if you're using your own character, you can go to the Avatar tab, go to Rig Builder, make sure it's on R6, and then just press My Avatar, and it'll spawn your character. But if you're not using your character and using somebody else's, you're going to have to download a plugin like this one, so you can type in their username and then spawn as an R6. Click on the rig, go to the Properties tab, scroll down to Position, and set it to 0, 0, 0. If you use the plugin instead of the actual Roblox importer, you're going to have to set your position to 0, 3, 0. Once you have your avatar, go to the Explorer tab on the right side of your screen, click on the rig, and then right click it, and go down to Export Selection and save this file on your computer. Then, after that, open the rig by pressing this little triangle and make sure you select all the accessories you want in the GFX. So to select multiple accessories, you're gonna click it and hold down control. And then once you have all your accessories selected, you're gonna right click it and then go down to export selection again. Make sure you save the accessories and the rig file in two separate folders. Once you have everything saved, we're gonna head into Blender. Now that we're in Blender, we're going to be importing the rig pack that we downloaded from the beginning of the video. So go up to the edit tab on the top left, go down to preferences, go to add-ons, and then click install. Once you click install, just import the file we downloaded from the beginning of the video. It should say Roblox Starter Rigs. And once you've done that, you're going to type in Roblox Starter Rigs in this little search bar and make sure this is selected right here. Once you've done that, you could hover over these stuff right click and delete them. And then if you don't see this automatically on the side of your screen, it's probably gonna look like this. So you're gonna drag this little triangle and you're gonna select Roblox starter rigs, click this drop down menu, and then we're gonna select the body type you want. So for me, I'm gonna be picking the blocky rig. Now that our rig is in, the first thing we're gonna do is change the viewport. So go up to the top right and click this circle right here. Now you should be able to see the front of the character. You should be able to see the face. And yeah, we're gonna be putting our clothes on now. Go up to the shading tab, click on the rig. Make sure you don't click on the lines, click on the actual rig. And you should see this pop up. Hold down your scroll wheel to move up and you're gonna X this out and you're gonna open the file from the character you downloaded from Roblox Studio. Make sure to open the file of the character and not the file of the accessories. Once you do that, it should look something like this. And now, if you click the scroll wheel again and go down, you should see face texture. You're gonna X this out, and then you're gonna press open to open a file. And from the rigs we downloaded from the beginning of the video, a folder called Roblox HD Faces should have also been with the rig files. So you're gonna open that folder, and you should see a bunch of faces in it. Once you open it, it should look something like this. You can select any face you want from this folder and yeah, just find one you like and press open image. Now that we have a face, we're going to go back to the layout tab and we're going to import our accessories. Go to the top left of your screen, click file, then go down to import and go to wavefront.obj. Once you click that, import the accessories from the obj file that you got from Roblox Studio. Do not use the MTL one or it won't work. Now that the accessories are in, as you can see, it looks a little bit weird. It's kind of transparent. So we're gonna click on the accessories. We're gonna go down to this material properties tab, scroll down until you see blend mode and set this to alpha clip. Now you can see that it looks full again. And the last step for the accessories is we need to actually stick it to the body. Click the accessories, hold down shift and then click this little ring around the head. Then you're gonna press control P and select the bone. And once you do that, it should be stuck to the rig now. So if I try to move it, it's gonna move with the rig. Now we're ready to start posing. 
So click these lines around your rig, go to the top left where you see object mode, select the drop down and press pose mode. Now once you select different parts of your rig and you select different tools like the rotate tool, you can actually move your character and start posing it. To undo something, you're going to click Ctrl Z and to redo it, click Ctrl Shift Z. But yeah, just start posing. You can move any part of the body you want. And like I said, the undo is Ctrl Z. So yeah, just play around with it and I'm going to see you guys when I'm finished posing mine. I didn't really know what to do for the pose, so I just did this simple one. But yeah, from here, your GFX is pretty much done, at least the rig part, but now we just need to do the lighting. So we're gonna come out of pose mode, so go back to the top left and click object mode. Then go back to the shading tab, select this object mode right here, and go to world. And once you pull down on your mouse wheel and go up, you should see this. Then you're gonna press add, go to texture, press the environment texture, connect this color. We're gonna go back to add again and type in mapping and you could press enter. And lastly, we're gonna type in, oh, it's right here, texture coordinates. Connect generated to vector in mapping and then connect the other vector in mapping to the vector in environment texture. So now when we get the file for the texture, we can select the coordinates here and how we wanna position it. But now we need to actually go get lighting. To get the lighting, head over to this website called polyhaven.com, scroll down and press browse HDRIs. Then you can scroll down and find a lighting scene you like. All these different scenes have a different color of lighting, a different type of shading. So just select one that you like. Once you found one, you're gonna click on it Go up to the top right, make sure this is on 8K, make sure this is on HDR, and then you can click download. Now that we're back in Blender, open the file from the HDR lighting that we just downloaded. Once you open it, I know you don't see anything yet, but that's just because we have to change our viewport. So go to the top right again and click this circle now. And once you do that, you should see the lighting that you just downloaded all around you. And you can see that part of your character is also lit up. Go to the right side of your screen, click this little camera icon and press render engine and set it to cycles. Once you set it to cycles, your computer might start slowing down, but that's only because your computer is pushing really hard to push these frames. So if you don't want your computer to start freezing and slowing down, I suggest changing your viewport back to the other one for now until we're ready. So yeah, go to render engine, press cycles, then make sure device is on GPU compute if you're on a PC with a graphics card. Then in max samples for viewport, you can put this all the way down to like, I'd say like 100, somewhere around there. And for max samples for the render, you can put this down to about maybe, I usually put mine around 1,500. I don't really see a difference when I put it higher, but you can do whatever you want. And lastly, go down to film and press transparent. So now this will erase everything that's around you, like the actual lighting scene, but it'll still keep the actual lighting, if you know what I'm trying to say. I'm gonna show you guys what I mean right now. So go back to the top right, change the viewport back to the render one. And once you do that, you can see that we have a much more realistic look and nothing's around my character anymore. It's just the lighting that's still on it from behind. And now back in this part where the mapping tab is, we can change where the lighting is angled. So to rotate it to the front of your character, you're gonna select this Z in the rotation, and you're just gonna keep turning it until you get it to where you want it to be. So I think I actually have to make mine negative to get this angle. So I'm just gonna keep moving it until it's where I want it to be. But yeah, once you have the lighting where you want it to be, you'll be ready to render it and save the GFX to your computer. Now that I have my lighting ready, we're ready to render. One thing I forgot to mention earlier in the video is if you wanna make your rig glossy, you can come here and play with these settings. I'm gonna put specular down because I like that kind of matte finish look. To get a good glossy look, make sure you put metallic all the way up and put roughness down. You just play around with these settings and you can get a really glossy look. But yeah, now that we're ready to render, go back to the layout tab, press shift A, go down to camera, 
and move the camera into position from where you want to shoot for your GFX. To see what's captured in the camera, click this little camera icon right here and you can see whatever's in the rectangle is going to be in the render. So everything outside of it is not going to be in it. To move the camera easier, go into this camera view, then go to this tab right here, the object properties. And from here, you can rotate it in different directions and you can also move it up. You can back it up too. So just go like this, play around with these coordinates and get the shot that you want. Now, at this point, your GFX is actually done. So we can go up to the render tab on the top left and click render image. It should pop up another window and this is where your render is going to be processing. Right here you can see the sample count. Once this sample count is full, then your GFX will be ready to save. So then you can just go to the image right here in the top left, click on it and you should see the save icon light up. But yeah, from here your GFX is done. You can go up to the image tab like I said before and you can press save and save it to your computer. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this small tutorial on how to make a GFX. If you have any questions, you can ask me in the comments, I'll definitely answer. Or you can join the Discord. But yeah, like and subscribe.